Hello, I'm Salvatore, and uh, I got an invitation for you just for the next few minutes. Please come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. I'd like to ask you if you've ever seen this fictional character over there, that which, by the way, was an entrepreneur. Can you please raise your hands? Basically, all of you. But let's have a closer look at what imagination actually is. Among many, many different definitions, the better one I could find comes from scholars in both psychology and sociology, and it's looking at imagination as a cluster of processes, which are namely prospective thinking, counterfactual thinking, and perspective thinking. Prospective thinking means the ability to imagine a situation in the future starting from my present situation, while counterfactual thinking is, the, is namely the uh, asking, asking yourself what might have happened if, all right? So the ability to envision and reimagining something that already happened in the past and imagine how this could affect your present situation on the or a future one. While well, perspective thinking is basically walking in someone, in someone else's shoes. Then we have a small extra, which is memory and the act of remembering, because all our imagination is actually based on our experience and our memories, and even the act of remembering is actually reimagining and changing a bit what actually happened. There's quite a lot of confusion when it comes to terms such as imagination, creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship. In common language, they're quite often mixed up. And I think that this uh, frame from Tina Sealing put it, put, it, put it well together and uh, it's put as a hierarchy. Of course, in reality, there are many obstacles that we need to overcome when it comes to imagination. Try and be as, imagine, as imaginative as you, as you can in an environment like that. It's hard, right? right? In a gray cubicle like that. And in our world, we are constantly entertained and we run super busy lifestyle. That's also huge obstacles. Uh, in organization, things can get even more tricky. Uh, the environment, we just mentioned it, but as well as roles and structures. If these are too rigid, too stiff, there, there wouldn't be enough space for employees, for instance, to develop any ideas and even more to pitch them to their executive. On the other hand, if there are no structure in place at all, there might not be a clear channel of communication, so ideas wouldn't have space to develop. Of course, where there are obstacles, there are also solutions. So we should put strategies in place to nurture a culture of imagination. What are these solutions? First of all, carve out time. There are some organizations, some companies, for instance, in the design industry, where the employer gives even one year of, sub of paid sabbatical every seven year work. Would you like that, right? Try and talk with your, with your employer. Uh, but of course, there are also other strategies like keeping a spirit of playfulness within the team, uh, as well as nurturing what we can call cognitive diversity, so having people with different backgrounds making part of the team. Let's have a look at some examples in the real world. Let's dive in the real world. Uh, I'm sure that many of you, if not all of you, would know this brand here, right? Can you please raise your hands if you know Polaroid? All of you? and you associate it with photography, of course. Well, Polaroid, uh, now it's starting up again, but it, was, it basically went bust a few years ago. How that happened? They completely missed out on the digital revolution. Why? The why is that all their executive came from a chemistry background, so they didn't nurture what we called before cognitive diversity. And the structure was so rigid that there were no channels at all for employees that might have envisioned the, the importance of this changement, and, but they, did, they didn't have the capacity to transmit this vision. If we look at a different and positive example, 
I would bring up this company over here. On the other end, I'm sure that none of you would know this brand. I'm right. Uh, but you would probably know indeed Engluster, their main website. Um, basically, what, did, what Recruit did and what made this company a huge success is that they turned the imagination of their employee into a real asset. They put structures in place so that all employees can easily put together a pitch, put together their ideas, uh, put together a team, and uh, propose it to the executive. Basically, they turned their ideas into a new source of revenue. And there are many companies that were born from Recruit. So the company turned itself into an incubator. So what are the key takeaways for us here? First of all, as we mentioned, make up space. Imagination needs space, as kids needs boredom. And don't leave it to the case. We need to put strategies in place to nurture imagination. The best moment for new ventures to build up these strategies is there are the first are the first months and so this is an opportunity that uh, that all new entrepreneurs shouldn't leave out they shouldn't miss out on imagination these are some refer some reference for you if you're interested in this topic thank you for your attention <laughs>